I was born in Zurich, Switzerland, and that was in 1953. Okay, and is that where you spent your childhood? Yes. yes. Okay, so you've, you've spent all of your childhood in Zurich? In Zurich, yes. Okay. So when you were growing up, did you have a teddy bear? No. My brother had one, not me. Um, at the time, actually, thinking about it, it was only boys who had bears. Not so much girls. Girls had dolls. Yeah. Okay, and so, so I, a... When I moved to this country, I realised that's completely different in this country, you know. But in Switzerland, as far as I was aware around me at the time, and so that was sort of late 50s, the girls had dolls and boys had, had bear, if out together. So you didn't feel that you wanted a bear or should no, have had a bear no. or... Not really, no. In that case, let's talk about your dolls. <laughs> Did you have a doll? I had quite a few dolls. Although the doll I want to talk about today, she's called Barbara. I would never call a doll. I mean, she's Barbara. She is someone with a name. So, um, i get her out of it just to show her to everyone. <laughs> So that's Barbara, and I remember very well the day when I when I when I first saw her. Uh, it was Christmas, and I felt around the whole Christmas preparation something special would happen. Happen. My mother kind of made so little, uh, yeah, comments, and so here I was with that um, box, and I unwrapped and looked what was in that box, and. I was just from the very beginning absolutely uh, captivated and I think first of all I saw her hair because it made me feel is she real is she is she what is she is she a doll because this is real hair obviously and um, my mother had a little um, kind of almost a bit of a little speech saying you know this is um, a very special doll and uh, there's only one like her because the lady who made the dolls she was an artist and um, these dolls just have become quite famous actually and Barbara ended up with me because she had a problem with her arm and she had been in an exhibition and something happened to her so um, my mother heard about this I don't know how that there was a doll and that doll had a problem with them, so it was affordable. That's the point about it. And but mum my mother made me aware that this is something something very special. So uh, here she was with me and um yes. So when I look at her it, it really brings a more brings back all the memories I had. Uh, her as uh, I don't think as my friend really. I I remember a few times I got up at night in the middle of the night because I had forgotten to undress her, put her pyjama on. When I came back from school, she had to sit down with me and listen and sort of trying to learn to write and read. And I think she, she, she just was more of an imaginary friend than a doll. And um, that hair kept me endlessly uh, busy. I, I did everything I could do with this hair. And uh, also my mother made her clothes. And um, one thing really upset me every single birthday when I had a new dress or something. My mother, because she was busy, she always half finished the, the little dresses. So everything was not quite perfect so Barbara had all these um, shirts and jumpers and something not quite finished um, so how old were you when you got her five okay five or six yeah and I have to say she really stayed with me I mean if you like for the rest of my life because um, not only did I play with her passionately, uh, I mean the children who came to our house, they didn't really have 
much of a choice what to do. Um, and I was very aware of them not sort of dealing with Barbara properly. And I can see that, you know, looking back, that probably also set me a little bit apart from other girls because they never had it all like this. I mean, they were seriously expensive at the time, seriously expensive. And they are now, I mean, if I would sell her, that would give me, honestly, maybe 20,000 Swiss francs. <laughs> now, um, yeah, my brother hated her, the older brother. I um, mean, the younger brother, he had to be part of all this, you know, when we needed a male thing in our games, like a priest or, or um, a father. So he, the younger brother was part of it. Uh, the older brother, he, I think he just thought it's such a bloody fuss about that doll. And he's, he actually threw her one day when he was angry with me, he threw her against the wall, which was, I mean, when that happened, it was just this moment of total silence, <laughs> almost a sacrilege, you know, Barbara has been thrown to the wall. <laughs> and, um, we then went to see the lady and uh, uh, who, who made Barbara because one had to repair her at the back. Nothing much happened really. And uh, she was quite sort of uh, a lady with great authority. She wasn't sort of girlish herself or, or sweet. She, was, she, was, she had a very dark low voice and she was very strict and she wanted to know what had happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. So who was it that made her? She's called Sasha Morgenthaler. She uh, is an artist, or she was an artist. She long passed away. She was the wife of a quite well-known Swiss artist. And um, big traveller. She has travelled all around the world. And that inspired her uh, to create all sorts of different dolls uh, so this is uh, really looking like a swiss sort of girl while the others there were tibetans there were african boys they were from all around the world and she called them her children and um, she took that all very serious like me like i did so is that one handmade yes Yes, it's all handmade. Uh, it's basically, she had a couple of women working for her at the time. The head is ceramic. She painted the face. She, she, the whole head is, is, is exclusively made by her. Uh, every single head is different. And she later on then had a mold and uh, the whole uh, Sasha puppet turned into a mass fabrication doll like this one, which I also had. So she is kind of a unique piece and this is a cellator washer. Um, losing her pants. And of course, again, I talk about, again about the hair because they're all real hair. And I gave her later on hair for my grandmother, so she was collecting hair a lot, this lady. She also, the fabrics they had were real baby and children sort of left behind dresses. And then she then used them to make the, the dresses for her dolls. Um, and the body is, I mean, there's a straw inside. As far as I know, you can see it at some place here. And this fabric around. Uh, yep. So I think really, to me and probably to most girls who had one, or adults, it's, it's about the expression in her face and sort of the um, the appearance of being a real child, being a proper little person. And uh, I think to me that was the intriguing thing that for me, she was not a doll. I would never have called her a doll. She was just Barbara, as I said. And um, 
she had her own mind as well. I mean, she, she. I remember being angry with her, and <laughs> I remember being really upset because of something I've done to her or she's done to me. And uh, yeah. So when I grew older, so in my teens, everybody around me had long stopped playing with dolls, of course. And um, I knew I should stop playing with her, you know, that she should somehow painlessly disappear out of my life. And I knew that would not be possible. And so I kept her a little bit longer and sort of late, late teens, I think, I, one day I can't remember why exactly, but I decided now you just have to stop this. So um, I packed her all up, wrapped her all up and put her in the loft where everything ended. That was of no use anymore. And so she was, and of course, I couldn't bear <laughs> the thought that she was up there. I remember once having a dream. I do remember, I remember that this morning when I was thinking about the interview. And I dreamt that she had died. So uh, <laughs> I went up there and got her down and um, just introduced her back. <laughs> and just thought, I did just have to bear the embarrassment, you know, when people notice that you're still having a doll in your room. Um, yeah. So do you now think of her as a doll? Good question. Um, not really, I have to say. She's still with me, she's still around. And because she brings so an intense sort of collection of mem memories back of being in my life and being part of my life, I still can't really objectify her. She's still more than... than, than a, than a doll. And I have to say, she, as I thought that this just before as well, you know, she kept, she kept me somehow sane. You know, she, she really enriched my world uh, as, another, as another friend. And, um, yeah. So you said you had other dolls. Did the other dolls play the same role? No, never. I mean, I had a couple of plastic dolls before that, and they kind of moved into the background. They were also around, they had to be dressed, etc., and played the part in the family seats or whatever we played with. But she was sort of, she was the one between me and almost to say she, she was sort of a go between me and other dolls, or me and toys, or me and, and the world, which is just the material world, if you like. <laughs> she was sort of something between. And, uh, I, you know, I, again, I thought about my choice of job later on. I uh, worked and museums, but also I wanted to study anthropology because I chose anthropology or chose anthropology because you deal with lots of communities and cultures, non-European ones, who have strong ideas and beliefs that um, there is not such thing like material world and immaterial world. They have very flexible boundaries around this and uh, that a stone or a puppet, you know, something like up there, tiny little puppet, they all are, they are charged with something, they have a potency and I think children have a sense for that. Children know that exactly, that things are not just things, they're more than that and um, there's a relationship between that and so you can create that friendship. So, yeah. No, when I look at her, that's what you are uh, question again. Yes, my adult self knows it's a kind of a doll, but something in me immediately thinks she knows all about it. You know, she she knows how important she was, and she knows that she kept me sane, basically, in a very crazy world as children have to grow up in. I think it's that thing of dolls and objects in general having their own lives yeah. and their own stories. Absolutely. 
It's not just about how they relate to you. It's she yeah. probably has her own opinion about what you're saying. I as totally well. agree. I totally. Agree. She was actually quite excited to be filmed today. But because she's a well-behaved little thing like I was, you know, she's not that kind of... I wish sometimes she would have been a bit more naughty a bit, but I'm afraid she is a bit like... She was a bit like me <laughs> because I wasn't naughty. I was this kind of... Um, yeah. So she didn't do all the things you wanted to do but didn't? No. No. No, I had... Uh, no. No, I think I needed her to be totally loyal and to be totally on my side almost. I don't know why. I, I never really thought further than that, but I felt I would have been a bit threatened almost if she had turned into a, a wild girl. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm obviously not going to ask you how important she was to you because you've already <laughs> made that very, very clear. Yeah. If I asked you if you had a best memory of her, do you have one memory of her that you can pinpoint? Um, I mean, spontaneously, what came to me was the moment of having opened up that box and unwrapped her and that moment of, that's incredible, you know. That, I think there was a moment of me not quite sure if she was alive or not. And, um, and she has a lovely smile, I think. <laughs> so that just, it just, I think it, it just meant to me there was, a, there was something really important, some kind of, something important happening to me by having her now in my life. I think, yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about her or any other dolls? Mm. Really? Okay. In that case, I'm going to ask you about construction toys, which mm -hmm. you answer maybe yes or maybe no. Did you have any construction toys? Not me, my brothers. Mm -hmm. Well, loads, loads, wonderful ones actually. I, I, I remember vaguely of having joined in from time to time. Sort of wooden, sort of building house, houses, building train sets and uh, with them. No, but not really, it wasn't really my thing. No, you weren't interested, it wasn't that you'd have liked them but weren't allowed them, no. just not interested. No, my parents most of the time we played on our own. My parents couldn't be bothered about this gender thing, really. But I have to say it was the 50s and it was a very sort of bourgeois um, background. So, you know, uh, lots of educational toy around, lots of good toys around. And I, I think I just fit it very, very clearly in the girls' realm of all of this. Yeah. Mind you, my brother was cooking a lot as a young child and he later became a chef but uh, yeah he he broke through and my parents actually encouraged that very much mm. so you said about the girls realm mm. when you were growing up so you're in zurich what it, what was the girls realm when it came to toys it came to toys specifically i had a doll's house that was a very typical thing to have for a girl again a very nice one mind you I didn't think it was very nice because it was too educational it was all wood and I really didn't like that but it was I mean looking back it was a very nice doll house what else uh, things like little suitcases with nursing um, uh, things in it sort of to be a nurse <laughs> and to listen to people's heart so it was sort of a little bit for a doctor as well that was quite interesting uh, because you then could go to other people's bodies and do all these things and uh, what else did I have I have to say with me I was passionate I was a bit obsessed about her but other girls I mean I was 
I have to say, I was a lot on the street as well, in, in the garden. So we do basically the same girls and boys buying huts on trees and yeah. Um, so was Barbara an inside thing? Did she come with you when you went out or no. was going out and playing outside something different? No, no, she would never come out. Um, no, she would stay there. There was the thing about being, uh, that her being sort of precious. <laughs> yeah, so. So the, the playing outside was much more about things that didn't involve toys, I imagine. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it, there, is, there is one area where the, the, the inside and out, we had two balconies. And I remember a lot playing on the balcony where she was, of, of course, as well. But she wouldn't be part of, let's say, we, buy, uh, we built a hut on, on, on the tree and then she would sit in the hut. I don't think so. I can't remember. I would take her out in a little, um, what are they called, push chair. Mm -hmm. So she would come out uh, when when there was maybe a family walk or something and she would be in a push chair. Um, yeah. So when you were a child, were there any toys could be dolls, could be bears, could be construction toys, could be something else. Was there anything that you really want, wanted but didn't get? Hmm. No, not a toy. No. I don't think so. No. Is there anything else about dolls, bears, or construction toys you want to say that? You uh, just said? a very general comment <laughs> I would like to make when, because I'm now living in this country and have been here for 15 years, that that whole area around giving her up and putting her back, and then having sort of squeeze her back in. Um, into life and live with the embarrassment of having a doll still around. When I, when I moved to this country and I walked into other people's homes, I, there was this big relief to see in people's houses dolls, soft, soft toys, all sorts of toys, and people really happy to talk about them. So they, they seem to move here with people into adulthood and still around, and people as I said, they're very happy to, I mean, I had so many stories from adults about soft toys when, you know, what they, what they did with them, etc. Now you would never, ever have to have in Switzerland. <laughs> no. <laughs> no joke. That's interesting. Any idea why not? I mean, firstly, I mean, it's a whole cultural thing, obviously. Zurich is a very Protestant place altogether, very, very Protestant, so very uh, um, far away from any fairy tale. And um, I think it's just, uh, it's looked at a little bit sort of childish and um, it might go together there or, you know, if you look at the literature for children, it's very different in Switzerland or Germany than it is here. I find literature for children in this country wonderful, you know. You couldn't think of Harry Potter being written in German, could you? It's just there's something not quite the same, really. So the whole world of having characters and the characters come alive and they do all sorts of things real people can't do, but uh, there are lots of other beings around who can do things. Uh, and sort of, yeah, the whole idea of there are lots of different uh, creatures around doesn't, doesn't exist so much. No, no, it's different. I mean, the literature is, for children I find very educational. Again, you know, very serious and sort of well-intentioned and 
sorry, I'm a bit, maybe make a bit of a caricature around this. But you will never, I promise you, you will not find a bear or a doll in a, in a person's house who looks, who thinks he's an educated sort of person. Um, just, yeah. Okay. In that case, you haven't got anything else to add. I'm going to say thank you very much. I can turn it off.